Hey guys, how you doing? Well, I'm not really doing too well, and that's what I want to talk to all you guys about. We are now six days away from Election Day. And... I'm now suffering from election anxiety because I trust the American people to make the right decisions and to choose wisely the president who will be president for the next four years. I just don't trust Democrat politicians and all people in authority on the Democrat side. Um, everybody everywhere in all the polls and I've learned to distrust the polls okay um but I'm constantly being told over and over again that Biden is still leading in the polls and how many votes have already been cast and we still have six days I mean and of course not including uh, election day and if I could I felt better with the um, roaming election board, I guess that's what they called it. When they came to my house, they came to my home with the computer, which was, is, you know, <laughs> In a way, I kind of miss the old style of voting. You know, I really miss that. As low tech as it was, it was always guaranteed. You walk into the voting booth, you walk in there, you pull a lever, and that closes the curtain. And you have all the people and what do you do? You throw a switch. And that is your vote. That's how you cast your vote. Now, I think at the top row, it says you're voting for, you have that choice to vote Republican or Democrat. And when you vote either way, all the other levers automatically Pro that way. Okay. And you have that choice. And you can choose to do that. And if you choose not to do that, then you have to go to each individual one. And you throw this lever. Chung, chung, chung. And then, when you're done, and you swing that lever the other way, and the curtain opens, all those levers return to their um, neutral position. And each vote is cast and recorded. So only you can prevent forest fires. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Now, only you know who you voted for. 
Nobody has access. Because you go into that voting booth, close the curtain, you have your privacy. And if you are going to vote Republican or Democrat, you throw that switch and all the other switches that are either all Republican or all Democrat, all get switched automatically. All those levers automatically go down. Open the curtain, they all reset back to their neutral positions. I, I love that. That was as low tech as that was. I loved it. I loved it because there was no doubt that all the votes will be recorded. No room for doubt, no room for scandal, no room for scam, no room for fraud. It was beautiful. And then they went from that to the computer. <clears throat> and you would sit down at a table and the computer would be the screen that covers is a shield and you were there one at a time rather than a whole bunch of boots along the wall. Okay. Oh, and you walk in there and she has this big book and she says, what is your name? Lifted, Jim Lifted. Mm. And she will check to see if you're registered. And once, they, once she sees you're registered, then she lets you go and vote. Security, what we don't have anymore. Okay. And so now they got the computer. But even so, even with the computer, you walk in there like I did years, some years ago, and they'll say, what's your name? Jim Lipton. Look in the book. Okay. Go ahead. And I think what she does is she takes your card and she sticks it in another part of the book. Saying, okay, you showed up to vote. And we still have these people that haven't showed up to vote yet. Okay. You sit down at the table and you got this big computer screen and you just you just vote. And you have these little arrows on the screen. You got arrow, 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 arrow. And each little box to each arrow. You know, and everything's lined up. And, and then you vote. Okay. So, when I became disabled, <coughs> When I came, became disabled, and I couldn't go to the voting uh, station anymore. Because my back would hurt, I couldn't stand for long, you know, and then I had to worry about breaking the chairs, you know. And I would ask for absentee ballots. <coughs> I'd request them. And I would request that the roaming election board to come to my house. Because that way I knew my vote would be counted and not lost in a ditch somewhere. Okay. I came in, plugged in the machine, the computer, set it in front of me. Stood over there, let me vote. 
didn't want to know who I was voting for. It wasn't important. That was your private vote. But now, I voted on a card and submitted that card and I had no idea if the card reached its destination and my vote was cast. I have no way of knowing. That's number one. And number two, Biden and Obama and everyone on the left are saying all the right things. They're saying everything their voters want to hear. And keeping the truth from them. And. And then I hear about. How Biden is leading. And Trump is. Not doing so well. You know, that scares me. Is it true or is it propaganda? Being unsure is the scariest of all. And God help us if Trump loses because that's the end of our country. And that's where this anxiety comes from. I'm terrified of a Biden-Harris presidency. Terrified. Because for the past four years, I have seen how much the Democrats don't care about the American people. All they crave is power. Power. Control. Like an abusive husband. Rapists. It's not about sex. It's about power. When power and the means, no, the ends justify the means. So in other words, they will do anything to achieve what they set out to achieve. It's just totally scary. To me, it's clear what they plan to do. And it terrifies me. We're six days out, and I am terrified. I will be terrified for the next six days. 
hoping and praying that Trump wins another term. I can deal with the unhinged mob of the left. I can deal with that for another four years. I hope that Republicans regain the House and increase seats of the Senate. Because then Trump will be able to fulfill all his promises. And we will see our, our country emerge with so much going for it. And all Americans, Trumpers and never Trumpers, Republicans and Democrats. And here is the thing. Here is the thing. Trump said it. With, but right before World War III started, there was evidence that the never Trumpers and the Democrats were starting to turn around and begin to support Trump. There was so much evidence of this. It's success, Trump says. Success that brings about unity. It's success. And once we seek success, you will see a lot of people Jumping on the Trump train. Because now they see a contrast. They see where they are. And they see where we are. And where we are. Looks pretty damn good. And that's why they were ready to jump on board. And then World War Three hit. And then that separated us again. And we got to build that back up. So now, this close to an election, the Democrats are told everything they want to hear. And I know that firsthand. Because the people who hurt me the most, the people who burnt me, were people who told me everything I wanted to hear. Who said all the right things. And I fell for it. And guess what? I end up getting stabbed in the back. I ended up worse than I was before. I ended up burnt to a crisp. Stabbed. Thrown into a ditch and left to die. Because I believed the cunning. Because it sounds so good to be true. It sounded too good to be true. Well, you know, Trump is pretty much saying, but see, the difference is, Trump is authentic. Biden is just reading off a teleprompter to say all the right things. Yeah, Trump reads off a teleprompter. Most of the time he doesn't. Because he's authentic. He's authentic. He says what he means and he means what he says. So. I believe 
Oh, I I can't even predict how it will feel November 4th because I just don't know. I don't know which way the um, uh, needle is going to go. I was thinking of weather vane. But a needle is the weather vane going this direction or will the weather vane go in that direction? But I, I think the needle is more accurate. Which way will the needle go? Go to the right or go to the left? And being unsure, I have cast my vote already. Even though I don't know if they received it. Or it ended up in a ditch somewhere. I have no idea of knowing. I have no way of knowing it. Now, I wish they would do is when you do fill those uh, absentee voting, that they send you a card saying, Thank you for your vote. We received it with our thanks. I'd love to receive that. That way I know my boat reached where it's supposed to go. It reached its final destination where it's supposed to go. That it didn't end up in a distant place. <laughs> Wish there was, since this is mailing ballot, there should be tracking on it. Yeah, yeah, let's put tracking or insurance. Tracking is better. What is better to you? What, what, what do you think is better? Go to the post office and say, I want to put tracking on this. I want to put insurance on this. Because they won't take good care of it. That's what they should do with mail-in boats. So at least I'm assured that my boat was counted. That's what I need to know. Was my boat counted? But also... Fear. November 3rd and November 4th. Six days out. Which direction will the country go? What's going to happen to our beloved country? And if God forbid Biden should get in, then the truth will come out. And then everybody who voted for Biden is going to say, oh my God, what have I done to unleash this nightmare? That the wolf in sheep's clothing finally takes off the costume and reveals just who bewitched all the Democrats. I've gone through it. I've been told everything I wanted to hear. And I got burnt. And I just hope and pray that Trump wins and Biden loses. I am terrified. 
of the consequences if Biden wins. I am so terrified. So, so for the next six days, I I'm going to be a nervous wreck worrying it'd be like going to the doctor getting a scan See, and the scan reveals you have a spot right here. And you have to wait for the results. Is it cancer? Or is it benign? Nothing. And you're waiting. Day and you have to wait for six days and you're waiting for that phone call from the doctor. Doc, tell me. Please tell me it's good news. Please tell me it's not cancer. Please tell me. Because on that day, he will tell you, he or she will tell you, one way or the other. Uh, Jim, I'm sorry to say you have cancer and you are going to die in about a week. Or, Jim, I got good news. It's not cancer. It's benign. It's nothing. So, I'm going to be like that patient who learns he's got a spot right here and has to wait six days for the results of the test to find out if it's cancerous or not. That's the way I'm going to be for the next six days. So, my friends, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening in. I will see you later. Take care, guys. All right. See you soon.